Thank you guys so much for joining me. I have to say, I binged the series this past weekend and there were so many belly laughs from the cast. I have to say thank you for that. I'm just gonna jump right in. When you found out you were gonna be a part of a girls group with Sarah, with Renee, with Paula, with Busy, you know, what were your thoughts? And Sarah, I'll start with you. Oh my gosh, I was a, it was a complete pinch me moment. I mean, to get a phone call from Tina Fey and Meredith Scardino, who are two women that I already were fans of and looked up to and admired their creations in the world. Um, it felt like a real pinch me moment. Um, and as someone who, you know, came up in the music industry and, and that was girl groups were a really big part of what I looked up to and out at and listened to. So to get a chance in my forties to like put on a choker necklace and a head scarf and like, <laughs> like live my, live my best girl, girl dreams fantasies. It, it's just been so much fun. So cathartic for the times that we're in to, to really like focus on joy and laughter. It's been great. Absolutely. And Renee, what was that phone call for you like? Uh, it was like, finally, I spent, I've spent a couple decades trying to get signed in a girl group. It didn't work out for me until, um, until COVID. That's what, that's what had to happen. <laughs> uh, I love that. Exciting. I, I just was super happy to, uh, to be standing with that woman right there and Paula Pell and Busy Phillips, you know, singing great songs. Very funny, great songs. I can imagine. No, like I said, hilarious. Now, you know, being in a girl group, there's a lot involved. There's singing, there's dancing, there's the elaborate costumes. What were the most fun parts for you and what were the most challenging? And Renee, I'll start with you this time. Most fun was trying to pull off um, really big moments with uh, not maybe enough rehearsal, um, but you know, but but feeling like we uh, we did it together. That was the most fun part, and and actually the, the also what was super fun was the fact that I didn't have to do my own hair, makeup, and styling. The fact that I got to be standing there, supported and lit, and you know, and 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 you know, just kind of on fire. Um, so by, you know, really, really, really talented people. And for you, Sarah? I think that there was, I mean, similar to what Renee was saying is like the fact, the, the camaraderie and the connection was a really immediate force on, on set. And I think, and I think that really extends out to the crew as well, because we had all been not working for months and going through this extraordinarily traumatic time. So to get to go back to work and to be with people and to do something joyful all felt so yummy. And so just even getting in a car in the morning and going to work felt like fun to a certain extent. I mean, it was like 4.30 in the morning sometimes, which I was not in a great mood about. But um, that part was so fun. But what, when you were just saying like, we got to do it together, there was a scrappiness about making this show because the logistics were so challenging. And so, and there was, a, it was ambitious and they wrote the hell out of these scripts and like lots of flashbacks and forwards and just like changing time, you know, where we were in space and time. And so the elasticity of the storytelling was part of what made it so adventurous and so much fun. It was a really creative set. For sure. And you mentioned some of those flashbacks. It was a joy to see you guys, you know, kind of grow up with each other and do those performances. But one scene in particular really caught my eye. And Sarah, I have to ask this to you. You were joined by Dolly Parton, or should I say <laughs> Tina Fey. How was it when you saw Tina come out of hair and makeup and costume? And how fun was that scene? I mean, for those who have already seen the show, you do you do a double take. I mean, she she looked amazing. Our our you know, hair and makeup design costuming crew did such an incredible job. But then Tina, who just like morphs into this other being, <laughs> and was like every time she was about to go on set, she'd go, yawn and stretch and try to come alive. And she'd like get her little dolly on. She'd like touch onto nine to five. Um, but I was, you know, nervous. I was nervous. I was playing opposite one of my heroes and um, in this very absurd, playful way and trying to just show up wholeheartedly. And uh, it, she was very generous and it was just a ton of fun. She's like playing drumsticks on her boobs. It's just like 
how can you not enjoy this moment? I'm playing one-on-one -on -one basketball with Tina Fey dressed as Dolly Parton in high heels in the middle of the night in in Queens. Like, like what is my life? During a That's global pandemic. I know, <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic. Everyone's in masks. This is, I'm gonna remember these moments. That's when those night shoots and those early call times are probably worth it. And exactly. Renee, speaking of Tina, I know there were other stars who we got to see and who have made cameos on the show. How was it working alongside Stephen Colbert and Vanessa Williams for you? Uh, they're great. Um, I, I, I'm huge fans of both of them. And uh, they, uh, they always show up whatever they do and kind of blow you out of the water. I think what's wonderfully unique about having shot in COVID is that everybody that was there um, just was so grateful to be around each other without a mask on. I mean, only between action and cut could we take off a mask. And, uh, and so, yeah, you know, people that probably go through life doing a lot of very, very glamorous things, Stephen Colbert and Vanessa Williams, um, were just as grateful to be there as we were to have them. So it was a, it was a, it was a love fest.